for keeping it Citizen TV. Uh, and uh, seeing us today is Tuesday. Uh, we're going to talk health this morning. We are going to be talking about uh, how it is that you can best deal with some of your sinus issues. I have Dr. Sam Gathera in studio, who is an ENT surgeon here to tell us more. Welcome to Power Breakfast. Thank you, Jay. Maybe we can start with the definition of sinusitis because it's a word we've heard. Maybe some people might not know exactly what that means. Okay. Um, sinusitis basically means inflammation of the sinuses. The sinuses are spaces within the face. Um, and what the natural uh, purpose of sinus spaces within the face, that is below the eyebrows, on the eye bridge, and on the cheeks, so below there's a space. And that space is called a sinus space. And the sinuses open into the nose. Uh, the, the sinuses are lined up with the mucosa, and they have hair cells, little hair cells that beat um, and push mucus. And when they push that mucus, when you breathe in dust, when you breathe in any environmental polluters, they're able to trap that. And therefore, they play a role in protect their, their protective role. Mm -hmm. um, so when you have that lining inflamed, and two keywords, swelling and fluid, you have a swelling, you have fluid in that lining, then that is called sinusitis. Okay. Right. And the causes of sinusitis, you've just mentioned environmental factors. Is that is that the main uh, cause of, of someone having you know inflammation in their sinuses? Um, environmental uh, factors are a big problem. You you uh, currently we know that uh, the level of pollution or prevalence of pollution, air pollution per se, has doubled in the last twenty years globally. Mm -hmm. Kenya probably not excluded. You have pollution from uh, vehicular uh, fumes, uh, from um, uh, dust and pollen, all kinds of uh, pollution. Um, <coughs> the, so these chemical irritants, when you breathe them in, they inflame the lining of the sinuses and you get you know, the swelling and the fluid and then you get sinusitis. Mm -hmm. The other factors, of course, that predisposes to sinusitis um, is um, the anatomical, what you call the host factors. How is your nose shaped? Uh, you realize the nostrils are two. There's one on the right, one on the left. But you may find that the septum that divides the two portions of the nose uh, is not straight. It's bent. We call it deviated nasal septum. You may also have spikes in that septum. Inside, we mm -hmm. call them spurs. When you have spurs, when you have deviated nasal septum, when you have polyps or growths in the nose, some growths may be um, benign. You may have growths that are um, malignant. All this predisposes you to sinusitis. The other factors, of course, is allergy. People who are allergic, mm -hmm. they're allergic to pollen, they're allergic to dust, they're allergic to strong smells, and they react and they get inflamed. Mm -hmm. So all these are factors. And of course, lastly, you have what you call systemic illnesses. People who have uh, immuno, uh, in, uh, uh, immunodeficiencies, maybe you have HIV, maybe you have a cancer, maybe you have diabetes, you may tend to have your mucosa more prone to getting inflamed. Okay. Right. And I understand there are different types of uh, sinusitis. It can either be acute or chronic. Right. So maybe talk us through the different types. Okay, great. Um, the commonest that people have, nearly, literally everyone has had an, an attack, what you call a sinus attack. And basically that is acute sinusitis. And that lasts uh, uh, around less than four weeks, okay? Then you have what, uh, what you call chronic sinusitis, which lasts more than four months or 12 weeks. Then in between, you have uh, what you call subacute that runs between four weeks to 12 weeks. And then you can have what you call recurrent mm -hmm. sinusitis, mm -hmm. which occurs, um, you, you have probably attacks of acute sinusitis, about four or more attacks in a year, then we say you have recurrent sinusitis. That's one definition in terms of time. You can also define in terms of the causative organism or the, t or the triggering factor. You can say you have bacterial sinusitis, viral sinusitis, fungal sinusitis. Mm -hmm. You can even have traumatic sinusitis when if you get an, uh, an accident and you get injured around the sinuses and uh, you develop sinusitis, you could have uh, what you call um, uh, iatrogenic sinusitis, where you probably get admitted, you get stuff put through your nose as a mm -hmm. patient, when you mm -hmm. come out of there, you have sinusitis. And uh, so those are the different uh, uh, definitions of uh, sinusitis. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, you know, a lot of people might use sinuses in, in you know, the same way that they say, I have a common, I have a cold. Right. You know, 
I don't know if that's er erroneously so. Right. Uh, how does it relate to having a common cold or is it something completely different? That's a good question because uh, you realize that uh, when you have a cold, when you have um, a sinusitis, the symptoms you have a lot of symptoms that are similar. similar yeah. For example, you have nasal blockage, you have a running nose, uh, you feel you know congested, you, you, your head is heavy. Uh, but the difference when you have a cold or a flu is a cold or a flu would come in, you know, suddenly uh, last about three to four uh, days and then you taper off. And one of the characteristics of cold is that most often there's a, f there's a fever. And within four or five days, it should be going down. Mm -hmm. Now, that cold is a predisposing factor to getting sinusitis because what we are saying that you get infl inflammation of your nasal cavities and then the mucus goes deeper into your sinus cavities. Mm. So if that then goes on beyond 7 days, 10 days, 14 days, then you do not now have a cold, you do have acute sinusitis. So the difference in uh, is in terms of length, second in terms of whether you have a fever or not, and uh, lastly in terms of um, if you are sign because one of the things we talked about sinusitis is that um, one of the trigger factors is allergy. Mm -hmm. So you do find if you have for adults, most of the trigger is allergy. For children who have sinusitis, most of the trigger is upper respiratory tract infection. Now, if you're an adult and you have a cold and you are itching and you are tearing and you are sneezing, then that's not a cold. That's most likely allergic rhinitis with related sinusitis. So mm -hmm. that's the way you can differentiate between what you can say common cold mm -hmm. and what you can say is um, uh, sinusitis. When a lot of us uh, experience the symptoms that you've talked about, right. uh, which are similar to the common cold, we rush to the chemist, we get some decongestant and wait for it to go away. Right. Is that advisable? Well, there are measures that you can do at home when you get a sinus attack. One of the things is, um, I'll start with maybe the same ones. You could just, because one of the things is that um, you, get, you get congested, you get blocked, you get very uncomfortable. Maybe you have a headache. So you want to clear your nose. Mm -hmm. You want to breathe. You're feeling very bad, okay? Yeah. One of the things to know about uh, when you have a sinus attack is that you just feel blocked and sick. And you know you're not feeling well. Mm -hmm. So you want to unblock that. So the easiest one is just take a face towel, put it in warm water, and just put it over your face. And just breathe in the warm air and just try to clear or liquefy mm -hmm. or liquidify the mucus, which is thick, and then you can breathe better. You could also put a bowl of uh, steaming water, yeah. take a towel, and just cover yourself and breathe in that steam. And, mm -hmm. you know, just do that. And that helps a lot. You could add a little eucalyptus oil or camphor or menthol. You can buy, buy that over the counter and just clear your nostrils. Mm -hmm. Okay. You could also use decongestants and you could buy the decongestants and they are there over the counter. The challenge for decongestant joy is that um, people tend to overuse them. You mm. should use them a max of three days. Wow, three days only. Right, because okay. we do know that if you use them for longer, you get what you call, okay, they'll clear your nostrils, but then after some time, there is a mechanism where you get what you call rebound congestion. Mm. So after using them for maybe one week, two weeks, one month, then you start swelling. Mm. You get a rebound. So that's a kind of a physiological um, uh, reaction. And eventually, you become dependent on them. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you could get a very serious condition where y the tissue, the lining of your nostrils and your sinus just just uh, disappear or atrophy, as we call it, mm -hmm. called atrophic rhinitis. So we know that you should not use over-the-counter decongestants anyhow because you risk getting atrophic rhinitis, which is really difficult to treat. Right. Right. Uh, is it contagious? Is sinusitis contagious? <laughs> uh, not really. <laughs> okay. One, we talked about cold. We talked about flu as a predisposing factor. So if you have a flu, and that is your starting point, and uh, that's why I think sometimes when you have someone sneezing and, you know, they have a hanky all over, you yeah. want to know, how long have you had this? Yeah. Just yesterday, keep off that. Yeah. You want not to shake their hands. Mm -hmm. And if you shake it, shake their hands, you want to hand wash. Mm -hmm. It's very important to wash your hands after shaking hands with someone with a flu because mm -hmm. you're going to get it because mm -hmm. most of, most of uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the flu uh, um, is from viruses. So viral infections, you're going to get that. So, but when you have sinusitis, which is 10, 14 days, 
and you now have inflammation of your sinuses and are swollen and you have fluid and you have mucus, mm -hmm. that is not contagious. In fact, even for a cold, the, the first three, four, five days, that is when it's very infectious. After that, it's not infectious because you shed off the virus in the mm -hmm. first uh, few days. Mm -hmm. So after you shed off the virus, then you should... You, sh you, you are not contagious anymore, mm -hmm. right? What is the diagnosis process like for, for sinusitis? Do I have to have had this happen several times before I come see you right. and, you know, have it lasted for more than, you know, the three, four days that you were talking about the common cold? Or when, when is it appropriate for me to come see a doctor? Let me tell you a fact. People treat themselves for sinusitis. Before you see an ENT like me, people have treated themselves, they have bought stuff over the counter, mm -hmm. you have seen uh, probably a GP before you land to, um, to an ENT. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is that um, uh, you should be able to control most of the symptoms. If you get a flu and you get sinusitis and you're lasting about a week or two, you could take the congestants, you could do what you have talked about, but if you have a fever, if you have pain, if mm -hmm. you have congestion, you're not able to breathe, then you need to see a uh, not necessarily an ENT, you need to see a, 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 a medical practitioner right. so that they can examine you. And if they examine you and they find that your nostrils are blocked and you have what you call mucopurulent, you know, like discharge that is colored and uh, probably infected inside your nostrils and you are tender when they touch you around the face and you're mm -hmm. jumpy, then that means you may need treatment. And the mainstay of treatment is actually antibiotics. Okay. So you need to get antibiotics. You need to decongest your nose. Um, if it's allergy related, then you need to get antihistamines or anti allergies. Mm -hmm. um, and that should really sort it out. Mm -hmm. And of course, for, pe for people with pain and headaches and uh, uh, difficulties, you know, they, they are feeling very uncomfortable, you, you can give them analgesics or anti inflammatory drugs. So that's basically what you need to do. But for you to be diagnosed, um, a clinical diagnosis is sufficient. But when you talk about um, 14 days, we talked about acute sinusitis may go up to one month, mm -hmm. then the gold standard is basically a CT scan. But you, if it's for a cold for three, four days, I will not order a CAT scan. Yeah. I'll not order a CT scan. Yeah. But when you've had it for three weeks for one month, mm -hmm. then I need to do a CT scan. At this because point, the antibiotics have not worked or... No, it's not really that the antibiotics have not worked. They may have worked, but you don't have a fever, you don't have pain, but okay. you are still very blocked. Okay. You have a lot of accumulation of mucus in your sinuses. Mm -hmm. So you're not breathing well, you're uncomfortable, you're not necessarily in pain, but you have congestion around your face. Your mm -hmm. sinuses are full, mm -hmm. and that's why we do a CAT scan. Because we want to see if your sinuses are full and they are not draining, because one of the purposes of treatment of sinusitis is to drain the sinuses. Mm -hmm. Like we said, the sinuses are spaces within your face and they make your face, uh, your head lighter. It is said that maybe if the sinuses were all full, they were solid bone, then most likely you, know, may, not, you may not be able to hold up your head oh, wow, to be hanging. <laughs> <laughs> right, so it makes it lighter. Yeah. And then of course, if your sinuses are full, you sort of get an echo to your voice. You can't hear your voice very mm -hmm. well. So, and, and you've known that when mm -hmm. maybe you, uh, you have a cold and then you feel like, you know, your voice is not normal. Mm -hmm. um, but when the air is in the sinuses, this kind of a resonance in the sound, and then you, you, you feel you're fine. You hear your sound fine. So even if you don't have pain, even if you take an antibiotics, and, but you're still congested, you're still blocked, you're still not feeling very well. Yeah. And you need something Still not done. healed. Right. You've, we've talked about some of the causes of being, you know, environmental factors such as pollution, also allergies. Is this something that's preventable or is this something that just kind of happens and you have to deal with it wow um when you talk about um the predisposing factors to sinusitis remember we talked about allergies yeah so um for adults because one of that's one of the major predisposing factors then uh you need to prevent allergies because this is one of the preventive factors uh predisposing factors sorry so um, the thing about allergies is that you need to figure out what you're allergic to. Right. Is it dust? Mm -hmm. Is it pollen? Is it um, what we call animal dander? You know, cat hair or dog hair? Is it uh, plant dander? Is it uh, pollen of flowers? Is it uh, strong chemicals or strong fumes? Mm -hmm. um, what is it do you react to? 
um, is it the commonest? About 80% of people react to something we call house dust mite, which is microscopic organisms within your household, and you, you may not be able to see, but it's the fine dust that you find around the house. Mm -hmm. um, you may not be able to figure out that one out, but some people do know they react to something. And um, you could also go for some tests, what we call allergy tests, and mm -hmm. maybe you can figure uh, that can be figured out. And then, of course, the big thing is avoidance. But how are you going to avoid? Uh, um, for example, if you react to chemicals and you're working in a chemical industry, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Are you going to leave your work? So it becomes very challenging to avoid allergens. Mm -hmm. But suffice to say, you should avoid the allergens so that you go, don't get allergic rhinitis, which now predisposes you to sinusitis. So that's what, one of the ways for prevention. But the other thing, because we said a cold or a flu, uh, if not treated well, progresses on mm -hmm. to sinusitis. So that means when you have a cold, when you have a flu, you want that sorted out. And the main thing is to decongest your nose mm -hmm. so that you are clear. Because if you don't decongest your nose, what happens is that your mucus builds goes up. into it builds up mm -hmm. and uh, fills up the sinuses mm -hmm. and then eventually you get sinusitis okay and you've talked to us about some of the ways that we can decongest at home so i'm sure uh, viewers watching appreciate that that's all the time we had uh, this morning but thank you for the overview uh, on how it is that you can better deal with sinus infections dr sam gathera ent surgeon here enlightening us on power breakfast stay tuned uh, we've still got more to come willis Raburu will be uh, talking about some of the stories that are trending this morning some entertainment stories so he'll be breaking those down for you in just a short while. We take a short break.